and I always say when I do these slides is that golf swings would be impossible without these forces. And so uh, this video kind of shows that golf swings are impossible without ground reaction forces because this guy's going to try to take a golf swing on ice. And obviously on ice it's going to be really difficult to push down into the ground because there's no friction between our feet and the ground. So it's going to be really hard to create those motions. And this guy has some kind of unfortunate thing happen to him here. But obviously during our golf swings, if we kept that force positive the whole time, what would happen to us eventually? Well, we would walk towards the target, right? We'd do a Gary Player walkthrough drill. And I actually have some pretty cool data that I was looking at the other day of uh, Padraig Harrington when he was actually doing a walkthrough drill in competition. Uh, we got the chance to measure him on a 3D force plate at uh, Cameron McCormick's facility in Dallas at Trinity Forest. Um, and you saw that, that horizontal force stay positive the whole time. And he would walk towards the target as he was hitting the ball. Um, and so most of us don't do that. So if we're not going to walk towards the target, what do we have to do? Well, we have to absorb this momentum that we've created here, the area under this curve, with the area under this curve, negative momentum, to try to stop us from moving forward. And when we talk about torque, what we're actually doing with our feet in the ground is producing something called a force couple. And what is a force couple? Whenever I think of a force couple or whenever I teach it to my students in California, I always have a water bottle with me. So if I have a water bottle with me, how do you take the lid off a water bottle? You can't do it with, with linear forces, right? If I try to push with a linear force, that's not going to do anything. How do I take the lid off a water bottle? I need pure rotation and no translation. How do I do that? Is I push in one direction with my finger and another direction with my thumb. And that creates the rotation that takes the lid off a water bottle. And so that's exactly what your feet are doing to the ground in your golf swing. They're pushing in opposite directions to create your rotations. All right, so I have a little video here to help you understand the difference between a more horizontal or glider type player and a more torque or rotational type player. So you can see these two golfers here. This video was sent to me by a friend of mine who videotaped this. I think he recorded it off his uh, Facebook or Instagram. I forget what it was. Um, and uh, so you see this golfer has two players hitting shots with their feet on foam rollers. And obviously with my feet on foam rollers, I can push side to side and out. those things will give me some resistance and push back on me and give me some ground reaction forces. But if I push forward and backwards, those things are going to roll out and they're not going to give me a whole lot of ground reaction forces. So I would argue one of these players is primarily the horizontal player and one of these players is primarily a torque player. And after you watch this video, you have to guess who's who. The last force we're going to talk about is our vertical force. And the vertical force is the one that's kind of come in vogue recently because of players like Lexi Thompson and Justin Thomas, players that are almost literally off the ground jumping when they hit the ball. And this is the one that I remember. I grew up uh, in Toronto, Canada um, in the 80s or so. Next, we, we partnered with Ping a couple years ago to do some research on our ground reaction force plate. And the reason I'm showing you this is just to show you uh, some data on amateurs. So everything I've showed you so far is on PGA Tour players. Ping at their facility in Phoenix have a whole bunch of employees there who play golf at all different levels. And so we want to see what happened in a big population of amateur golfers in terms of their ground reaction forces. What's your big miss? Do you have a big miss? It misses right. Misses right with a block or a, a fade? Yeah, it's kind of a push block. A push block. Okay, cool. Good to know. All right, hit a few there. We'll get warmed up. Give you that back. There you go. Thank you. And so Val, if you could put up the swing cut software for them. So you can see here we have the four cameras down the line, face on, above the head, and kind of the, the behind butt view camera, we call it. We have our GC quad launch monitor working here. It triggers every time he hits, it'll trigger the swing and it'll measure it. Do you know your launch monitor numbers, Rick? Good looking golf swing. So generally the first things I'm gonna look at in terms of the ground reaction force patterns. First, we gotta set the tabs here so we know what parts of his swing are what. So we go to impact, we go back to the top. And then to the start. Okay. So as we see here, it looks like he's got two kind of dominant force patterns. So the, the horizontal force reaches the bottom of the tour average, and so does the vertical force where the torque is slightly behind.